Amiibos as we see them are just the newest version of a problem that we have been having since the early 2000s. Extra content to games has been paywalled for about two decades now, with some of its earliest roots going back to MMORPGs. Some may even argue that the creation of Sonic & Knuckles could be the first instance of it in the gaming industry. All of these would pale in comparison as to what Nintendo would unveil come 2014, when they officially jumped into the toys to life craze that Skylanders were enjoying. These adorable hunks of plastic were known as Amiibos, and are the focus of today's episode, especially in light of the new Skyward Sword Zelda Amiibo that has been announced. I'm Cornelius Belmont, and let's talk about the Amiibo problem. Before we begin, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Your likes are the best way for the channel to grow, and I'm still really early in development. Every single one counts, and I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. With that out of the way, let's dig in. The main focus of this video is due to the recent announcement of the Zelda Amiibo for the Skyward Sword update, and how many fans are upset about it. It really highlights that there is a problem in the industry regarding these Amiibos, and if we go back to the launch of Breath of the Wild, it makes it very clear why. Simply put, limited Amiibos often offer bonus features in games that are otherwise unobtainable. To completely understand how things have gotten this bad, we need to understand the history of Amiibos and their roots in the industry. So let's go through that. The base idea of Amiibos isn't terrible, and I've often heard a justification for their existence by collectors who see them as nice looking figures. I have more than a few friends who have shelves dedicated to them in their homes. This phenomenon of collectible figures isn't new and goes back some ways in Japan. I get the impression that if there is a big anime or game in Japan, that there will also be posable toys you can buy from it, be it from Pokemon, Gundam, or Kamen Rider. To my knowledge, Toys to Life started as early as 2011 with Skylanders. Depending on how you wish to define it, it could go back earlier with various cards Nintendo would scan. I am choosing to focus on plastic toys with chips in them though. Much like the Amiibos we see now, Skylanders were toy figures with NFC chips in them designed for video game communication. With Nintendo seeing the success of the model, they would follow suit three years later with Amiibos. Initially, Amiibos offered some sort of bonus that could be obtained in your games, be it in-game currency, random items, or something else that is relatively innocent. As time went on, these plastic toys slowly began to hide what would traditionally have been downloadable content inside of them. And that is what would begin to upset customers. So you might be asking, why are Amiibos a problem? Well, if you haven't been paying attention to the industry for the last five years, then you might not have realized that Amiibos have become a scarce commodity with many of the most sought after ones having extremely limited runs. This scarcity is brought about by two really big things, first of which being the more popular characters get bought out more quickly than others. Back when Toys R Us was going out of business three or so years ago, you could walk into their bare bones establishment and see row after row of Palatina on clearance. Any of the Zelda champions on the other hand, well, they would have been sold out. The other factor leading into the scarcity of some of these figures are the unique benefit in games that each of them offer. Given that I am a Zelda focused channel, I'm going to be sticking to Zelda Amiibos for a frame of reference. Let's go over a couple. The Wolf Link Amiibo that was created for Twilight Princess HD Remaster has a bonus dungeon locked away behind it. It also allows you to summon Wolf Link in Breath of the Wild. Similarly, Smash Brothers Link can allow you to summon Epona in Breath of the Wild, and it is the only way to obtain this horse in-game. This actually led to a small fight in the speedrun community, back when instant horses provided a great advantage and before wind bombs had been discovered. 
Later on, the Champion Amiibos would be introduced, and each would offer a unique, though extremely ugly, piece of equipment. And again, this was the only way to get them. Then there is the blocky, highly coveted 30th Anniversary Zelda Amiibo, which similarly unlocked special clothing in the game. These are only some examples. This trend exists beyond Zelda, though, and has been a growing problem ever since the figures were first introduced. As annoying as it was to have content locked behind physical objects, most of which you usually would have to pay $16 to get at retail price, this practice could have been acceptable if you could always go out and just buy the toy. And that is where the problem with supply comes into play. Again, if you haven't been paying attention for the last five years, there is a major supply problem with these goods, as many stores sell out their entire stock during the pre-order phase. Simply put, the demand for the product is high due to the extra features locked behind their function. If these were just fancy figures, I personally would not be as concerned, but many of the supply and demand arguments would still hold water for those collectors out there. Adding to the struggle with this supply is the ever-growing scalper market that exists for these goods, and the links that these scalpers will go in order to soak up the inventory all so they could resell it later. We've been seeing this a lot in the last year with PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X consoles, but it was also a problem with the release of the Switch, and I'm sure this problem will continue with the Switch Pro when that is a thing. While it isn't as bad to get an amiibo as it is one of these new consoles, they continue to grow more and more difficult to obtain due to the scalper market. The problem for this ultimately falls on the various companies that allow for this to happen or turn a blind eye to it. But I'm willing to take it a step further and lay the blame at Nintendo's feet. They're the ones creating a shortage of the product in the first place, and that in turn feeds the scalper market. Nintendo currently commits to making a large number of the product, then calls it a day knowing that her product will sell out with no skin off of their nose. Meanwhile, countless bots overload retailer systems buying out the supply for scalpers. Those scalpers then create their own market that we fans have to go through if we want the product and the exclusive content tied to it. Yes, there are of course ways around this using third-party technology that effectively fakes amiibos. And I am not going into detail about that here. I do want to say though that I shouldn't have to be finding a way to cheat the functionality into the game. All because the external limited toy to the game has been bought out by scummy scalpers. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about the glorious new Zelda amiibo for Skyward Sword. Simply put, she is gorgeous. Even with its higher than normal price tag of 25 US dollars, it is a nice looking figure. What does she do in the upcoming game? Well, when you tap her, it allows a function to instantaneously return to the sky on your loft wing. Better yet, when you use it while you're in the sky, it will instantaneously take you back to wherever you were on the overworld. It is a nice feature that will help prevent some backtracking in the game, and generally seems like it would be a great feature to add to the game overall to make it less repetitive. With that being the case, of course Nintendo has stripped out that functionality and attached it to a toy. They are putting a $25 price tag on it, and it is sure to sell out before you can even load up the page on whatever store you are shopping at. It really is unfortunate that things have come to this. And the sad truth is, it probably is only going to get worse. While the Zelda amiibo has a quality of life mechanic behind it, at least it didn't seal off a bonus dungeon like the wolf amiibo did in Twilight Princess. Still, I'm not convinced that's because of any foresight or even concern that Nintendo had for its fans. We very likely just lucked out. If you ask me, it's only a matter of time until at some point in the future, a game comes out that has a critical feature locked behind an amiibo that Nintendo simply didn't think about. Only time will tell if they fumble up this badly. Let's summarize. Toys to Life existed back in 2011 and served as a model for the amiibo market. In 2014, amiibos would start to appear containing minor useful features. 
Eventually Amiibos came out that had more advanced features in them, often locking content behind their use, such as a bonus dungeon and Twilight Princess. The structures of Amiibos resemble industry practices involving microtransactions and DLC, but with an extra factor of needing a physical object in order to access the feature. Because of this, a new scalper market has developed allowing some people to scoop up large quantities of the product and then sell them at an inflated price online. This market has grown to the point where certain products, including some amiibos, are practically unattainable through normal means. Scalpers achieve this by using bots to overload websites and buy out the stock within minutes of launch. Nintendo is aware of this supply problem and yet they have continued to do nothing about it for years. Nintendo has no real loss from the secondary market coming into play, as their product completely sells out, ensuring their profit. Likewise, retailers have no real negative impact from this, as their product gained from Nintendo also immediately sells out. The only people truly being hurt by this are Nintendo's biggest fans. And it really seems like Nintendo just doesn't care enough about them to try to fix the problem. Thank you guys for watching the episode. For the time being, I'm going to continue to focus on Zelda theories. But I'm beginning to plan out some Square Enix related theories for the future. If you enjoy my content, please give the video a like and subscribe. That would really mean a lot to me, and it helps the channel grow. See you next time, this is Cornelius Belmont signing out.